So Superman and Supergirl did get married in the comics. That's great. Dear Kaz, happy 4th year anniversary. This is for you. P.S. When are you going to review Shin Megami Tensei 4? 4th year anniversary. Oh, right! It's the channel's 4th year anniversary! Celebratory montage! Another year, another busy slew of reviews. One which involved discussing the utterly disgusting demise of a company that must not be named. Celebrating the 25th anniversary of one of the pioneers of the tactical RPG, concluding the Gargoyles Quest trilogy, and a Q&A that was months overdue. Whoops. As for the occasion, we're going to be celebrating by indulging in a yearly tradition, taking a look at an unappreciated gem of a game. So, what forgotten title will be given a second gander at this year? Well, if you haven't read the title, we're going to be taking a look at a game released nearly 10 years ago to this day. On the Nintendo DS. The Beat Agents are at your service. Now, this might be setting off a few alarm bells. After all, Elite Beat Agents is considered to be one of the best games on the Nintendo DS, earning rave reviews and winning multiple awards in the year of its release. Heck, it earned the silver medal on my top 20 DS games years ago, and nearly everyone who's played it has praised the game to no end. And therein lies where we're taking a look at Elite Beat Agents, the people who played it, or rather the people who didn't. A good game can receive all the accolades in the world, but if it doesn't get the recognition it deserves from the public, that is when a game becomes unappreciated in my books. It's not that EBA isn't well received, it is. It's that, as a game, it's largely unappreciated by the general public, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go over a little history, shall we? This is Osu Tatake Uedon, a Japanese-only DS title made by Innes, a developer who you might know for... for, uh... for Elite Beat Agents and the two Uedon games that's pretty much all they're known for. While neither a huge hit in Japan nor released in North America, the game was heavily imported since, unlike a certain other Nintendo handheld, the DS was region free, becoming a cult classic that prompted Nintendo and Innis to consider bringing the game to other regions. Keiichi Yano, co-founder of Innis and director of the original Uedon, realized that while the gameplay had universal appeal, a game about male cheerleaders dressed in black was an alien concept to Western audiences. Thus, he drew upon his knowledge of American culture to change the main characters for the English version of the game into a special task force a la Ghostbusters. This eventually led to Yano and Inus developing a completely new game that Nintendo described at E3 2006 as the American version of the cult import hit that we know today as Elite Beat Agents. The game was launched on November 6, 2006 under the Touch Generations label, a line made by Nintendo to promote games on the DS to consumers outside of their normally targeted demographics, with Elite Beat Agents being among the first games to bear the label. So, with a fresh new look at a decade-old DS game, did Elite Beat Agents truly deserve to touch the hearts of millions? Let's get ready, set, and... GO! Oh, I love that so much. There isn't so much an overarching narrative to Elite Beat Agents, as opposed to a premise spread across smaller stories. Sure, the later missions have some continuity, with certain characters appearing for the game's two-part finale, but for the most part, the premise goes that across the globe, terrible things are happening like a woman needing to be driven to the hospital, or gold diggers driving a rich man into poverty. When trouble arises and people cry out for help, Commander Khan sent out the Elite Beat Agent to solve the crisis through the power of song and dance. Think the men in black, except instead of focusing on the extraterrestrial, the EBA focused on the problems of people and sometimes dogs or immune systems. Yes, really. It is just as goofy as it sounds, but said goofiness is presented in such a sincere manner that it's hard not to love it for its sheer absurdity, as if this group not only existing in this world is a given fact, but that they can solve any problem that plagues people, regardless of how big or small it is. Clogged toilet? Agents are... Go! Marriage in shambles? Agents are... Go! Hitler rises from the grave and seeks to destroy the world based on an ancient prophecy? Agents are... Go! What helps is that these short stories really make you care about the characters in spite of it being as brief as the songs that accompany them. 
Admittedly, the scenario around them can be a little cliche, like a woman wanting to go study with her boyfriend being interrupted by her babysitting duties, but the charming comic book presentation sells each scenario and gets you invested in every one of them in an incredibly short period of time. However, it's not all joyfully dancing life's problems away. The one story that truly sticks out of the bunch is when a father makes his daughter a promise only to end up passing away due to an accident, with the daughter still hoping to see her father for the next Christmas and for him to fulfill that promise he made to her. While most of the transitions between the opening and the agent's grand entrance into the song are treated with a mighty cry of no! This one doesn't have them arriving, say, via helicopter dressed as Santa to cheer her up. Rather, it slowly fades into the gameplay, which doesn't even use the traditional sound effects heard in other missions, going for softer sounds like bells ringing to fit the somber song and the holiday season. Of course, if you mess up, it does have a share of silly variations, but still, it's remarkably restrained for such an upbeat and outrageous game. Like the titular agents themselves, it's an astoundingly quirky game that's all the better for embracing its screwy nature. It just makes you feel good helping out all these people. Something that's made all the more pleasant thanks to the gameplay. On the surface, Elite Beat Agent appears to be your standard rhythm game. Hit the notes at the right time to keep the song playing, hold for longer ones. None of this is necessarily breaking new ground on paper. However, there's a lot of hidden depth to the way the player interacts with the game, and it's all thanks to the Nintendo DS and its little touch screen. Hitting the notes becomes tapping each one in sync with the beat, while longer notes transform into lines that require the stylus to be drawn from beginning to end, sometimes with odd patterns to them. It's a great example of a game that couldn't exist on any previous platform. Unless you owned a GameCom, but let's be frank, that system was terrible and nobody bought it. This might seem like a minor change, but by moving from button-based input to touchscreen functionality, it makes hitting each note all the more satisfying, the screen itself having its own rhythm to it, as notes move from top to bottom, side to side, or in circular patterns. What's more, it's made all the easier to get into the groove of a given song in the same manner that, say, stepping from one arrow to the next in complete coordination when playing Dance Dance Revolution is more gratifying than had the action simply been performed by tapping up or down on a control pad. By playing through each phase properly in a given song, usually three of them, though sometimes there's more, you're rewarded with a cutscene the furthest the ongoing story and even ends up determining which of the endings you can get come wheel spinning time. Elite Beat Agent is designed with an almost completionist drive to it that awakens a desire to see the best possible ending along with everything that comes before it. While not a particularly long game, there is a lot of replayability to Elite Beat Agents. At the end of each mission, you're scored based on how many notes you hit and the timing of said hits. The higher your overall score, the higher your rank, with ranking up allowing you to try out new tracks to earn an even higher score. It's all these little things that enhance EBA to the point where getting in rhythm from beginning to end becomes an exhilarating feeling. By that same token, it's those very same rewarding moments that make you want to keep playing song after song that simultaneously sees you retrying a single stage you severely failed at because Elite Beat Agent has one brutal difficulty curve. This is a highly challenging game that, while it has its occasional moments of frustration, never approaches the borders of unfair territory on normal, whose pure delight upon completing a level makes all those repeated attempts worth going through. Hard mode on the other hand, yeah, just stick to normal. Of course, it helps to have some great visual feedback to indicate whether you're doing perfect or poorly, and Elite Beat Agents absolutely nails this area, with dotted lines leaning from one set of notes to the next as the agents wave their arms around in the very same direction with every successful win you hit, while missing one will cause them to fall to the ground or look dazed after a long streak of misses, the story reflecting your poor performance with a worse, occasionally more amusing story bit, and the spinning wheel signaling the end of a given song. Speaking of the presentation, the aforementioned comic book style storytelling accentuates the game's overall charm, while keeping its storytelling simple and stuck on the top screen so it's not to be distracting during a given song. The agents themselves have a lot of personality with the moves they pull off on the bottom screen, most of which are related to the songs themselves. When dancing to a slower song, they hold their positions longer in between notes. During the YMCA, you can even see them doing the poses in rhythm to the song. Speaking of the YMCA, let's talk about all of one problem with EBA, namely, the soundtrack. How best to put this, it's uh... It's kind of... Yeah, 
really, it's cheesy. It's very, very mid-2000s biggest hits at the time, with a few tracks your parents really like to listen to levels of cheesy. In addition to the aforementioned YMCA, they have Skater Boy and the Inspiration. Not that you should go in expecting an Adele-level quality soundtrack, mostly because Adele was just becoming a thing in 2006, but considering that these are the majority of the tracks you'll be hearing over the course of the game, the soundtrack is the biggest obstacle to anyone looking to play the game since 90% of it is comprised of either shoddily written or poorly performed songs. For most rhythm games, a bad score is a deal breaker. However, Elite Beat Agents works in spite of these tracks because it grasps at what few elements that work in these Psycho Nate songs when crafting each mission and enhances them with a set of superb sound effects. As an example, for Skater Boy, it taps into that rebellious youthful energy in the song to create a law-breaking high-speed car ride to the hospital. That's not to say that it makes the songs themselves good, it doesn't, rather that it makes them work between replaying a given stage for a higher score and restarting an especially difficult one for the hundredth time. It all comes together for an exemplary piece of engaging entertainment. There's a reason why this game plays so highly on my top 20 DS games years ago. It's because it has one of the best uses of the Nintendo DS's unique features, and I dare you to find a better example of a game. Why do people keep throwing things at me? Okay, fair enough, but we're tackling this next year. Seriously, that's really annoying. Also, that hurt a little. Unfortunately, said successful use of the DS did not translate into solid sales, as Elite Beat Agents was considered a commercial disappointment, only selling around 120,000 copies during the first month of its release when, according to an interview with Reggie fils Nintendo of America was expecting to sell at least 300,000 copies in that same time period. While the number might sound impressive for a niche title, for a DS game published by Nintendo, even one released as early as 2006, it's a major step down compared to previous Smash hits on the system, like Nintendogs, or even New Super Mario Bros. released earlier that same year, the latter of which sold over half a million copies in its first month alone. Now, while Reggie fils didn't rule out the possibility of a sequel in the same interview, when Anderson Nintendo did make a sequel to Await on in 2007, that game never saw a localized release, and there hasn't been a new ABA ever since. Disheartening as that may be, it's hard not to be a little happy that at least one of these delightful DS games made it over to the West. For those seeking out a physical copy, you can find one on eBay for roughly $15 to $25. Hopefully the game will be released on Virtual Console because Elite Beat Agents is an excellent addition to your gaming library. Once again, I would like to thank you all for joining me for this year's anniversary. I admit the last year was not as productive as it should have been, mostly due to a couple of issues with my PC, but this year, ho oh, ho this year, we're going to be celebrating the Pokemon series 20th anniversary all year around. We'll do a retrospective on the Persona series, and we'll tackle a little trilogy of JRPGs that fall under a golden sun. But until then, as always, game on my friends. We'll be taking a look at the newest entry in the Fire Emblem series, or rather three. I was gonna have it like taken out of the package during the video and placed on the desk during one of the earlier segments, but I only really have one take, so yeah. I kinda flub up the lines a lot sometimes, maybe. <laughs>